I'm far from the first person to notice this, but you're able to see the new rewards that drop from the upcoming skilling boss releasing next week. And let me tell you, these are going to be some game-changing rewards. And we're going to be talking about them, but there also seem to be some items missing from the collection log, and that's weird. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Gate of Eliteness is the upcoming skilling boss which you can fight once in a sort of story mode in the recently released Ode of the Devourer quest. It's a boss that has a skill pet which is the exact same model as the boss and even has a skin which could be locked behind a certain game mode or difficulty or a certain amount of kill count, let's say 100 or 1000 kills. The main reason I'm making this video though and the main reason you probably clicked on this video is because of the title thumbnail and that is the new skilling offhands. These things are going to be game changing. Let's take a look at the runecrafting skilling offhand called the Runic Attuner. This item attunes itself to a random runecrafting altar when crafting runes. I'm going to go ahead and assume that it changes every 10 minutes or so, although it might also change every few minutes, making this a really intensive training method. But we'll have to wait and see what that does. Runecrafting at said altar gives you 300% base runecrafting XP, so not as much as the Demonic Skull in the Abyss, because that gives you 3.5 times XP. But it also allows you to absorb energy. Every 5 energy, you gain plus 50% runes crafted. Now, it says every 5 energy, so that might mean it stacks. Let's say you have 10 energy. Does that mean you get 100% more runes? If that's the case, that's going to be a good, you know, money-making buff and perhaps an XP buff as well. Every 10 energy, you're able to teleport to the Attuned Altar, which is going to be very useful in terms of XP per hour, because it saves you time going to the Altar. At 25 energy, you are guaranteed a Magical Thread, again for money-making reasons, and I assume that resets after you've crafted runes. And then at 50 energy, your Runecrafting XP bonus multipliers increase from 3 times XP, or 300%, to 30 times, or 3,000%. Wow. I wonder how often the attunement changes or if you're able to, you know, force a certain type of rune by going to a different altar. Because if you're able to, you know, stack up your energy and then use this on blood runes or... It's just going to be amazing XP. It's, it's, it's This is a huge buff to runecrafting for sure. I'm just curious as to how fast you charge energy. Maybe that's once per 10 essence or something and how often that achievement changes, because that's going to dictate how good this item is. Next up, we have the Memory Dowser, which is the weapon you can see the skilling boss holding during the fight. It's the red-colored sickle-like moon thingy. It looks good, and it has a very powerful effect for divination. This item allows you to effectively train divination and gather wisps and deposit them as well, the memories that is, automatically with nine tiles of range around an energy rift, because you have to stand within two tiles of the energy rift, and you have seven tile range for gathering. That is crazy. This is a game-changing item for divination, because it effectively makes it so much more AFK, and you also have a chance to receive double memories. I assume that stacks, and it even increases the duration of an energy spring as well. Again, I'm not sure how this stacks with the divination cape or the ethereal connection engram, but it does increase the duration. So this is this is straight up a major divination quality of life and buff in one. To illustrate the range this item will have, I present you with the Swordfish test. Longtime viewers will recognize this from videos where I've shown how AoE damage works. Effectively, what I'm trying to show you here is that you have quite a large area in which you can stand, in this case, at incandescent energy or memories, from which you can automatically gather and deposit memories. Okay, so if I were to stand exactly within two tiles of the rift, assuming it also works diagonally, which it should, otherwise, you know, it's just one tile less, no big deal. Standing in the red tile, which is highlighted on screen now, I should be able to automatically gather wisps and then deposit memories as well from as far away as, just one example, linearly to the north, the yellow tile. This, in all directions, is going to be more than enough for most divination training spots to automatically gather and deposit pretty much every single wisp. I wouldn't be so worried about the range of this item, I would be more worried about the range towards the rift so that you automatically deposit those memories. The third award is the Scripture of Elidinus, which is a skilling scripture that has a 17% chance to spawn a wandering soul while training any non-combat skill. When dismissing that soul, which is likely going to look very similar to the souls you dismissed during necromancy rituals, you're granted XP in the triggering skill. 
Depending on how expensive this is, this is more or less just going to be a, you know, a little, I assume, a small XP per hour buff to every single non-combat skill. Nice little reward, and I think it's fitting that we are finally getting some more useful skilling scriptures or god books, so yeah, not too bad. The Latent of Offering is an upgrade you can use on your Amulet of Offering, which you've obtained from the Odor Devourer quest, which dedicates it to either crafting or fletching. Let's just hope that you're able to, you know, Get yourself a new basic one so you can have both. Empowering the amulet provides you with an enhanced XP bonus where the amulet now automatically sacrifices the wearer's creation. So if you're crafting something, these items are going to be out or disassembled for more experience in either crafting or fletching. I assume that this is going to function similarly to the crafting and fletching cleaners, which I've made a video on, which I'll link in the description below. And that's pretty cool, I suppose as, you know, this isn't related to Treasure Hunter and is part of the main game, so that's, you know, that's a plus. The XP per hour buff, of course, remains a mystery until the bosses actually release and people start getting these drops, but the recipes are already on the wiki, and, uh, yep, you need another Moonstone. Now, for some reason, not all the rewards are on the collection log yet, and that might have been something Jagex had done on purpose because there is at least two rewards missing. A codex, which we can see in-game by looking at the Grand Exchange and by going to the standard prayer book, and a ring. So we have a ring. And of course, you can't kind of a boss about a scripture. Unfortunately, I don't know what the ring is or where it went and it could have been cancelled last minute, but the prayer does seem like a solid pick for players without curses. The effect seems to boost your critical strike chance and for every time you do crit, 10% of your max life points, let's say you have 9,000, that's 900, is healed over a period of 6 seconds. Now, if this is something you can do over and over without any cooldown, it's going to be overpowered, and even high-level players are going to be using it to pretty much... Yeah, let's let's be honest, that's not going to happen. This will 100% have some kind of cooldown of... Even if it does have a cooldown, it's still going to be a nice little prayer to heal up a little bit, and it's going to be cheaper than using a Blood Reaver. You know, if you, maybe if you combine this with a Bunyip, you have your, like, mid-level soul split without having soul split. So, I still think this will have a place. I don't think it's going to be OP, and I definitely think it's going to have a cooldown. Like, there's no way Jagex is going to release this in a state where you can spam this. Because then, if you're running a crit-focused build, you're going to be a lot stronger. But it is a cool little reward. I just... You know, it's going to be expensive the first few months. Unless it's super common. We'll have to just wait and see. But this is good. Like, there's a PVM buff, but most of the rewards are skilling related, and therefore the rewards are quite adequate for a new skilling boss. I think, yeah, this is going to be a boss people are going to be farming for money, and it's a great opportunity for skillers to make some money as well, or players that just don't have that, you know, solid PVM build or skill just yet. And unlike Croesus, you will be able to solo this boss consistently because it scales down to one player. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and let me know what you think about these rewards in the comments below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.